Good afternoon, all. Uh, call this meeting to order of the Ojai Basin Groundwater Management Agency. It is 5 o'clock. Today is January 25th, 2018. Let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Cece, can I get a roll call, please? Dan Breen. Here. Jim Schinch. Here. Russ Baggerly. Here. Johnny Johnston. Here. All right, we still have an open seat that we are uh, today, tonight, theoretically going to uh, get closer to filling. Uh, let's get the uh, reports from the uh, various members of the uh, agency. Uh, it looks like the mutuals are first on the agenda, and that's me. So real quick, um, this is our first meeting since the fire, so there are, the, you know, updates are as follows. Uh, I ran into Peter, who runs a Senior Canyon, and his words were, we lost the canyon. Um, basically, uh, their water company is, got burnt down, and they're, they're in the process of trying to figure out how getting everything organized, pipes melted on the ground, meters fried, uh, leaks everywhere, and you know, they had an interesting, uh, interesting uh, distribution system to start with. Uh, and it's now uh, just they're in the process of trying to get things back together. Uh, at Hermitage, I understand, uh, made it all right. Their wells are fine. Uh, our water company, Seattle Robles Mutual, uh, we are also fine. Uh, we had a few, we had a scary moment there when the power went out uh, and our well wasn't pumping and our tanks weren't full. Uh, as the fire evolved, we realized that uh, we were the go-to spot to fill up water for all of the fire trucks because uh, it was easy in and out of our neighborhood. Our hydrants were easily accessible, there's no traffic, and we always had water. So we had hundreds of trucks coming through that neighborhood filling up. Uh, happy to have them. Uh, so we are fine from all of this, from this fire standpoint, from a water standpoint. Uh, I imagine we'll get some well depths. I haven't run one in my own well lately, so I don't have an update for you. What's going on with the Ojai Water Conservation District? We met today. Uh, most of my comments will come at other points. Discussed a couple of the items that are coming up. And All right, we'll hold on to that down the road. Uh, City of Ojai, anything going on with water that has come to the council that you might want to report back to this agency for? Well, the, uh, the council has requested that uh, if you or Russ or Jordan would be so kind as to possibly uh, come to a council meeting and do like a 10 minute presentation on the, you know, the status of the groundwater basin. That will make that happen. Okay, good. Not a problem at all. Right. And the only other issue that kind of relates to it, and I think Russ has probably got it too, the, this meeting we've been having with uh, Steve Bennett's office. Yes. Uh, the, the MOU, I don't know whether that made it to this agenda, and I don't know that it's necessary. They, it's a non-binding agreement, but just the idea that everybody is cooperating uh, for the mutual benefit of whatever that's going to be. We're all holding hands and going down the same road together, trying to figure it out? Well, yeah, and, and whatever you're doing or we're doing, if okay. we can do it together and maybe get more out of it, is the, uh, I think uh, Bill Wyrie refers to that as leveraging our positions or something to, for the greater good. I think that's what he says. Uh, if has, the city not, got a, has the city got a report or had a presentation from Casitas lately at any of its uh, meetings? Yes, they did, uh, not this last meeting, but two weeks before that. All right, so you guys are getting regular reports from the city that, you know. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to level. do, it, I would like uh, everybody who's involved and interested if they, you know, since we're not the, the uh, producer or purveyor uh, of water, uh, to just uh, get the sense of what all of the different uh, players, how they see it, you know. All right, well, yeah. we'll certainly make time to get a presentation to the council. Uh, so that you know they can get a face to what we're doing over here, and, and, yeah, and, and I'm sure they're interested in the right. the uh, capacity of the basin and how much. We will make that presentation and get that information in front of you guys. Okay. Uh, what can you tell us about what's going on at Casitas Mutual Water? Russ. I can't tell you anything about Casitas Mutual, but I'll tell you. <laughs> Municipal, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Right. And there's a T in my name, Dan, so it comes. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a B in my name, but it's usually green, so. <laughs> yeah, you just gave me one. Yeah. But it's in, the, it's in the agenda anyway. Okay. Uh, the lake le uh, level is currently at 35.2%. Uh, it went up you know, three or four tenths of a, of a foot, and now it's coming back down. Um, 
Steve Wickstrom reported to us at Water Resources Committee that we have six to eight months uh, before we reach stage four. So there's still, still time and we still have water. Um, stage four is not the end of the world. It means a 10% reduction in your allocation. When do you make those decisions about uh, when you move to stage four? In April. So in April, you, make, you, you review that in April, and then, in, and then after a board meeting in April, it's a, you, make a, you publicly state what the board's doing, and then we all know what's going to happen there? Everyone will know. Perfect. Thanks. If you pay attention. Um, is there any desire from the board to look at this and be more aggressive towards that stage four? Or are you guys just going to hold, hold steady on that until April and, and go with the six to eight months? Uh, it's going to rain, and the lake's going to fill up. Not to worry. <laughs> so prayer is now an official public policy? And that, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's wish, the signal plan. <laughs> Question on that. Source water uh, actually flows in from not Robles. Right. Or, and we're seeing so much. Maybe 50%. In a few years, it's 100%. Yeah. This may be one of them. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing flow across the basins here on surface waters. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a chance that we might see a good, a good percentage increase in Casitas from Coyote, Santa Ana, et cetera. Um, any information on that uh, that you may, might have at your fingertips? Information on what the flow is? is the flow coming into the base. Into no, the I'm lake. sorry. I'm sorry, I don't. Okay. But everyone should know, sitting in this room that lives in the in the Ojai, Ojai City area, you're you're standing on um, probably sixty thousand acre feet of water under your feet. So think of that when you think of what the lake looks like as well. Um, Casitas can utilize, can optimize the Golden State wells and make sure that uh, we utilize them to the best we can to provide water for your needs. Jordan, talk about the uh, larger basin. You have a, I think you have a presentation for us tonight? I, I do, although I will reserve that for item 7E uh, All right. today. Okay. Uh, but briefly, we appear to have hit the, the nadir on uh, December 13th. Uh, 2017 at that point the basin was about 60 percent full and has recovered since that point uh, given the data that we have so far we have yet to quantify that it's very dynamic time uh, from the time that I've started the sentence to the time I'll end it there will be more water there that's how fast things happen and it's a part of the dynamicness of this is associated with the the denuding of the hillsides of vegetation. So relatively little amounts of rain are resulting in a good amount of runoff. Plus there's a lot of spring flow that's coalescing in the, in the canyons and streams that are recharging the basin. We're seeing that in, in all of the basins we monitor uh, downstream from the sky areas and it it's completely fits the model of, of the cycles of fire and, and, and water. Um, mud notwithstanding that's a whole different issue that we're dealing with but uh, we'll talk more about all of that under 7e could you uh, what is, where is the wetted portion of san antonio creek now or has anybody had a chance to look we haven't made an official look but my understanding is that there has been flow all the way across the basin yeah. so it's it's so it's continuous from the headwaters effectively to the ocean and we saw the same thing in the ventura river today as well, so, so it, it's something that it, the, it begs the question: Wow, where's all this water coming from? You know, typically you need about 12 inches of precipitation before you see those creeks flow, and that has to do with the capacity of the plants in the headwaters to evapotranspire that 12 inches of water before they let it go. Evapotranspire. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the ET. The okay. amount of water that, the, and the process by which plants take up soil moisture and then transpire it to the atmosphere. Yeah. So the idea is that, that that first 12 inches of precipitation finds its way back into the atmosphere via the plants, and then when we get that 13th inch, that's when, okay, now we can let it go. With no plants actively transpiring, that water 
literally head south and gets to the basins. So, so the percolation, what, what is the, uh, the interplay between, the, you know, we're all being told that we're going to have a lot of surface runoff because of the, uh, the heat and the, uh, and the soil uh, sheeting the water, but does that, that doesn't necessarily affect where it goes and percolates down to the basin? So this is it's a very, very good point. And, and what we've seen is that the, the infiltration rate mm -hmm. uh, by which that surface water infiltrates into the subsurface <laughs> is different under the current conditions with a higher concentration of plant wax, ash, and some finer grain sediments, as well as debris flow issues and, and mud with a, with a slower uh, a slower, lower hydraulic conductivity for infiltration, it seems to be infiltrating at a slower rate yeah. than last year when it was cold, fresh sand. So we don't have the answers to that on a quantification level yet, but that's something that over time and in, by hind casting, we'll be able to take a really good look at what those infiltration rates are today versus last year. Yeah. Based on ra and rainfall plus how much rainfall and they, runoff yeah, okay. and the groundwater basin response. So it's a very good question. The short answer is it's slower. It's slower. And we don't know how much slower. But you're saying that there is some offset because the plant transpiration or whatever. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we're obviously getting gaining streams because of the the um, evapotranspiration or the lack of lack of ET. Yeah. For a point of reference, where were we in capacity this time last year? So this time last year, we had yet to have the massive, uh, massive uh, amount of precipitation mid-February. Uh, so we I think we were in still in the 40s in January 2017. Right, so we're looking at you know, year over year a net, we're net 20% up theoretically. Yes. All right. Thanks. Any other questions about capacity, where we're all at with our water usage? Dan, yes, I'm sir. sorry. Um, I didn't have a report for you on the OI service area. Yeah, actually, I was just handed to me right here. Did you, okay. did you get a, Yeah, I got that. Yeah. Well, good. So, I didn't just so that you know, there's the, the, the distinction between the lake and the uh, wells is, what we're, is the distinction here. Did you want to put that in the record and talk about it or just want to? No, I don't because I don't know anything about it. Okay. Move on then. Could, could Jordan give us the water level at, at the key well? In the presentation. Yeah, we're going to do a presentation in a second here, and we'll get to all that standard documentation that you would normally would do right now. So, any other any other comments on capacity use where we're at currently? Moving on to item number five, public comments. Uh, the board will receive comments from the public at this time. Other than for emergency items, no action will be taken during this period. Matters raised at this time may be briefly discussed by the board and will generally be referred to staff and are placed on a subsequent agenda. I have a speaker card here for Elizabeth Martinez. Come on up and tell us what you want to talk about. It's good news. Okay, right there. You can stand there. You can come up to the podium. If you come to the podium, you'll be uh, uh, recorded a little easier for everyone to hear you. Just state your name and where you're from and what you know. Okay, great. My name is Elizabeth Martinez and I'm an environmental planner with the Ventura County Watershed Protection District. So um, I'm here tonight to present to your um, board the latest status of the San Antonio Creek Spreading Grounds Project. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with it. Um, it's a project that's been in the works for several years. I think I started coming to the board to make um, uh, quarterly or uh, monthly presentations in about 2010. Uh, the project is a groundwater recharge project and it completed construction in uh, fall of uh, 2014. So the um, Ventura County Watershed Protection District is um, partners with um, several agencies here on the board to have gotten grant funding and implement the project. Um, it was very challenging to permit. It required um, a, a water right permit from the state board as well as your other typical permits from the resource agencies, but we overcame those hurdles. It was, has been delayed to be operational. 
um, and we just overcame that last hurdle on Monday of this week. Oh, um, so I notified uh, Russ and Jordan that um, we are actually got the have the green light to operate the project now. So um, the actual permit hasn't come in yet, but they said go ahead and use it. Well, no, that's not correct. We do have the permits. We actually got the water right permit oh, in June of 2012, but it was it had conditions in it. And one of the conditions was to collect subsequent stream flow modern monitoring data when we had certain high-level storms. I remember what it was. The official letter didn't yes. happen because of the government showdown, uh, shutdown. That's correct. So what the um, National Marine Fisheries Service wanted to see was they had required us to prepare an um, adaptive management plan, which was just telling, explaining them what the facility components were and what we had in place to ensure that um, taking flow out of the stream to recharge the groundwater basin was not going to harm uh, the endangered steelhead trout that may be in the stream. So we prepared that plan and we needed to update it with the latest um, um, uh, monitoring equipment that we had installed. So they accepted that plan and we got the letter um, this week that approved us to operate. So we've met our permit condition and we can operate when the next rains come and we generate enough flow in the creek to um, open the pipeline. So there's an intake structure with a pipeline, goes to four um, basins that were rehabilitated and to um, passive groundwater injection wells. And they'll go directly to recharge the basin. Terrific. So. Um, I can give to CC a copy of the adaptive national plan that they wanted to see. Now just order the rain. Yeah, yeah just yeah. Yeah. a copy of their permit letter. Yeah, so um, now we're, it's good news. So for the next rain, I'm very anxious to see how the facility works. Uh, we needed to install uh, monitoring equipment that would make sure that we have at least a foot of depth in San Antonio Creek before we start diverting. That's the minimum bypass flow required for the for the fish that they required. Since we've got a few new members here, why don't you remind us of the obligations that this agency has to to, to the success of this project? Well, we've partnered together for um, well before I started working on the project um, to um, apply for the grant um, and to um, partner together during the design um, and construction phase. And there is also, um, um, I guess, a term in the agreement that said that they would be responsible for part of the ongoing operations and maintenance costs. So it, it may need to be revisited, that agreement. Um, we've incurred some maintenance costs along the way, um, have not come back to your board to talk about accounting or, or cost sharing at this point yet because we haven't been operational. So very excited to see see this work and then um, you know give you a status report on where we are um, you know annual maintenance costs um, are they include if we need to do any um, work on the access road there's a rock um, access road to get to the site um, right now the the basin within the intake structure we had a lot of a lot of sediment in the water, and so it can fill up with uh, mud and muck. So that had, we've already um, taken a vector truck to clean it out once, um, and then we're required to do um, uh, monthly monitoring uh, for um, the presence or absence of the fish during the diversion season. So those are just a few. So, when it's time to talk about the bill, are you going to come to us and make this an agenda item for us, or do we have to do that? Do we have to be proactive at that level. Um, Whatever you think is appropriate. All right. And I'm sure I can get um, whatever level of management at the district to, to have those discussions with you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Very uh, before much. You, Any uh, other questions? If, yeah, I do have a question. Yes. The uh, recent fire, what were the detrimental uh, effects of that on this project? Uh, did they well, escape as most I said, of them? For, um, t to date, we have not been able to operate. So if you can picture, um, you know, the big concrete intake structure with a, with a, a screen on it, and then there's the um, two-foot diameter pipe, um, and it has a gate valve, so it's been closed. So um, the water that's come by has come in through the screen and just kind of sat 
inside that intake structure and then passed back out. So it did fill up with sediment. So even though now we are going to operate that, um, the, the pipe valve will come open, I'm thinking we'll get less sediment as it's passing, as the water's passing through. Mm -hmm. But it is detrimental that it is going to be having a large sediment load because of the fire. And that goes also to maintenance, right? <laughs> Right. Yeah, okay. So it's not optimal, but um, I, I figure if it can, if it's going to function under these heavy sediment load conditions, then we're looking at the worst case scenario for at least the water quality as far as, you know. When it's ru uh, running quality. under optimum conditions, is there some kind of a uh, calculation of rainfall versus uh, what, infiltration or percolation into the groundwater basin, like an acre foot for... Well, yeah, it, as Jordan relation. was was saying, usually we have several rains before we'll start seeing the flow in the creek when we can start diverting. So, in some respects, this is this is good conditions that we we are getting movement in the creek, so we have the opportunity to capture that. Mm -hmm. I think probably we'll we'll get some good stream flow during the next rain because the conditions will still be similar. And Johnny, there is a threshold at the um, is it the Grand Street Bridge, or there's the and maybe Elizabeth can mention the one foot depth. That, yeah. I think mean, Russ is referring to the point of compliance, right? Uh, with respect to stream flow, and what we've observed is that the the lowest stream flow, the last to wet, first to dry, is at about the Grand Avenue Bridge over San Antonio. Bridge. So that's, that's where we've installed a, a permanent stream flow gauge, uh, district gauge uh, six forty nine. And is that where the one foot is needed? Yes. That is correct. And that's both for NIMS and the city of Ventura. So between the headwaters and the ocean, that's the lowest flow that you should see on San Antonio Creek. That's correct. So if they should be passed there, they can make it good anywhere. 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 <laughs> uh, Elizabeth, do you get to take this pile of papers off your desk now and have much more room on your, on your desk? <laughs> I can put them in a file drawer, but things always stay active. <laughs> Thank you very much for the news. We Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate that. Thank you for having me. I, th you know, I think that maybe we ought to consider that uh, we have finished a project that is, you know, in, right in lines with conserving water and putting water back in the groundwater. That we probably ought to get this out in front of the valley and let people know that we're actually doing something and accomplishing a goal. And you know, we've got this happening and talk about it so that you know, perception is reality. And to the extent that they can see us doing things and getting projects done. Uh, any information is better than what we're than the lack of it now. So well, whoever uh, presents we, at city council meeting from so the OBGMA be, could, well, <laughs> could I, highlight this. I, I'd be more than happy to do that, but I think that you know, to the extent that you have any opportunity to say, hey, look what we did, yeah. do it. Well, uh, we used to call it a press release, but now I think it's a thumbs up in the in the Ohio Valley. No, it's News. called a tweet now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, whatever we need to do, we, we, uh, I'll get with CC and we can get something out uh, on that from our press release standpoint and let everybody know about it. Maybe the paper can pick something up on that. Any other public comments? They're important, so if you've got something to say, say it. Next item. Consent items. I move 6A. Second. Okay, well, the consent item, so that you know, is approving the minutes uh, from October 26, 2017. We had a motion to accept them by... Russ, and a second by Mr. Johnston. Uh, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. The minutes from the meeting of October 26, 2017 are accepted as presented. All right, let's get on to our action items. Uh, so, so the first action item we have on the agenda tonight is the Treasurer's Report, October, November, and December of 2017, our budget spreadsheet, and extracting charges by period. Who would like to give us an overview of these numbers? Or do we just want to review them and ask questions? I don't have any questions about them. Well, if you don't have any questions, I don't have any questions. It's pretty standard stuff. Just a real quick question. Where are we in the process? Where are we in our money collecting cycle uh, and, and from quarter to quarter? Or cent, uh, well, if you see the budget actuals, we got in um, the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. We received in October um, for the fourth quarter. Um, Big number there. July, August, and September, with the um, increase in the extraction rate of twenty-five dollars. 
so we received um, a total receipts of 25,000 and then November some more dwindled in 8,000 and for a total for that period of 35,000. I'm looking right at it. Does okay. anybody recall based on our projections if we hit that, if that was our projected number or we, where are we in relation to the original number or projection on that? Do we know? I, I went looking for the documents. I couldn't, I couldn't get them in front of me in, in a timely fashion. Do you have anything on that? I have not gone back and looked at that, but I'll do that and have that for you the next meeting. All right. So uh, the next meeting, let's take a look at what we actually did receive in revenue and then against our projections to see if we're in line and if we need to make it further adjustments down the road and or ask, you know, if we made more money than we did, great. If we less than we had planned, let's figure out why. Dan. Yes, sir. Um, since we just heard that uh, the uh, San Antonio Creek Spreading Grounds <clears throat> project is going to be operational, which means that uh, we just heard about um, operation and maintenance charges. We're one of the um, uh, people that will be on the hook for that. Right. Um, I'm wondering whether or not we have in this um, budget actuals um, reserves for that. That was kind of what I was trying to get to is what our, our, what our obligations are going to be on that. I think that we probably ought to make this an agenda item and drill down on what our obligations are going to be on this and make sure we have those reserves. Yeah, that, that wasn't built into my calculations, and right. so um, we need to go back and take a look at that and yeah. understand what kind of obligation you have financially. All right, so what, uh, it sounds like we're headed towards having a budget committee to go through these issues, so we'll organize that. and. Well, uh, do a committee. Elizabeth, who, who do we talk to about uh, possible charges? Is it Peter? Um, I don't know if it should be um, our director or possibly Gerard. Oh, Gerard knows everything. <laughs> Yeah. We just want to make sure that when that dupe comes, when that bill is due, that you know, we're prepared for it. So um, I don't, I imagine we're going to have a budget committee. I know we talked about it at the last meeting. We just didn't get it done. Oh, yeah. So you know what I mean. All right. Well, uh, I will get with John and we'll review this. And we'll have something to report back at the next meeting. And then um, we just sent out our, the next statements for the October, November, December. So there's a delay in receiving yeah. Those, okay. which is called our um, uh, our second, our first quarter because of the water year, October, November, December is the first quarter of 2018, and we just sent those statements out with the wellhead charge on them. What was the delinquency uh, from the from the last pay, pay period from the wells? Who didn't pay? I mean, not 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 in their names, but you know, numbers of wells that were still did not report. Do we know that? Probably about 25. 25 did not report. Yeah, you're probably going to be slower on this one. It's normally you have those at the start of the month. I had a lot of, well, I had about five phone calls, people wanting their reports, and we had to go back to the database, our database person, and have them redesigned to put in the wellhead charge. And um, December was a crazy month, so they yeah, didn't get yeah, out until that. last Friday. Are the 25 that didn't report, or, or do we see? Do we have the same people every yes. that just don't? And and this board has made prior attempts to collect that money and has been unsuccessful, and does does not continue to collect it, or is just less this ride? I mean, I mean, it, it, everyone's paying. So how do we have 25 people, or we have regular people not paying? What are we doing about that historically? Well, we. Still I know what we can do, but what have we been doing? We still send them statements. Okay. I call them. Right. Some of them claim that they return their report saying that their wells are abandoned. Okay. And um, uh, some people refuse to pay. They just say, I'm not, I'm not a part of this team. And um, that's probably around 10 that don't want to participate or say their well's abandoned. And we don't, we don't know. If they're, I've talked, and then I talked to the county, tried it, and then some of, a few of them, they get sold. I have to track down their um, new addresses, so that takes sometimes a little while. Sure. One took eight, eight or nine months to find, and um, so there's probably like five of those are, you know, turnovers, 
and then um, the other 10, um, some people are just chronically late. I finally get them and... You know, the chronically late are fine, as long as they pack. Yes. You know, that's, then it gets, that's fine. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Jordan, is there a certificate for um, a well that has been officially abandoned that comes from Watershed Protection District? Yes, there should be a permit that is signed off by, by the Watershed Protection District groundwater section. And so if somebody says they, they've abandoned their well, mm -hmm. they probably mean they're just not using it, and it's still a threat to the basin for pollution. Or potential extraction without quantification. Yeah. It has to be destroyed. Yeah. The permit is to be destroyed. Just to review some of the, an active well is one that is actively pumping at least eight hours per year. An inactive well is one that is, is not pumping that eight hours per year, but is either not equipped with a pump or is planned to be permitted or planned to be equipped. Uh, there's, <clears throat> there's a non-compliant abandoned well, which is what these are effectively contaminated with no reported eight hours and, and not a recent history of use. Uh, and there's, there's abandoned or destroyed. There's really no distinction. It's, if it's not used, it should be destroyed. Abandoned. And there's only one avenue, as I understand it, for this agency, and that's to ask Watershed, now close your ears, uh, Elizabeth, um, ask Watershed Protection District to issue a notice of violation, which they don't do very often. We can't lien the property for the amounts due us? Mm, I don't know. We'd have to, we'd have to go over our... municipal water district. I'd have to go over the the uh, initialized the initial legislation. Yeah, we need to look at the ordinance and see what the ordinance provides in terms of enforcing compliance and penalties. Um, I think the ordinance does authorize penalties. Whether or not we want to take that action or have another agency, um, may I have to look at that. Up to the misdemeanor level, right? Or maybe not even that can't speak to that right now we need to go and take a look at the ordinance it's not an issue that we've is, dealt with is authorizing penalties is one and the same is also leaning for collection well that that's the issue I think yeah, you've got right. authorities for penalties but I'm not sure you have authorities for collection so we need to look at that in the ordinances yeah okay. mr. Kenny can you look, not, take I'm, a look at that for us and we'll put this on the agenda for next time and 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 just take a quick look at what our enforcement op our, our, what our options are because obviously the, 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 the knock on the door and, and smile and be nice is the best approach, and we'll do that at nauseum as long as we're getting some in interaction from the folks. Um, but at some point, we've got to draw the line in the sand and decide if we're going to s pursue that with our resources uh, and whether or not it's proper for <laughs> use our, us to use our limited resources to pursue maybe 10 people that aren't you know, going to help out here and whether or not those resources are better put somewhere else. But, you know, and who has the authority to uh, require that the well be capped and or destroyed? We do. The proper term. We do. Yes. And the county. Yeah, and Ventura the county. county yeah, I mean, it seems like that's the yeah, ultimate so enforcement. Don't keep chasing a no account or a, a deadbeat. Just yeah. The, the danger of uh, pollution or someone being hurt. Well, let's get some official policy on this. Uh, I know that we did 15 years ago when I was prior president. Uh, we knocked on a lot of doors, and you know, 90 percent of those problems got solved. And I imagine the 10% we didn't solve then might be part of the same people we're looking at now. So, you know, we might, we might have already solved this, and we might just have a bunch of folks out there that we decide that it is what it is, and, and if we can make a determination that they're not, you know, sucking a whole bunch of water and not paying for that we might not want to d dedicate resources to it. Yes, Cece? Well, and most of them are the one-acre feet people. They're the small wells. That's, that was historically and, what we found last time we did this, yes. And if the county can file the notice of noncompliance against their property, that would be... That's where the lien comes in then. Notice yes. compliance of on the property, then you can't sell the property because you've got a compliance issue because you're not, you don't have a meter on your wellhead. That's, so that's probably the answer right there. There you go, Peter. Just did your work for you. <laughs> then you can thank Cece. <laughs> All right, I didn't mean to get off track there, but uh, it's important that we collect all of our money. It's important we're all on the same, we're, we're all contributing to the bigger pie. If it's the rule, it's the rule. We've got to do our best to make sure everybody follows the rule. Was there any other, where were we here? Lost track of us. I think we're moving. So uh, everyone done with uh, looking at issues regarding extraction fees, budgets, monies, any other comments? Uh, you, you need to make an official 
what you suggested there? Because it sounded like a it's coming up, Larry. Uh, as far as my asking us to take a look at the, asking our, our council to take a look at our enforcement issue, yes, uh, I can just ask him to take a look at the enforcement issue, and he can report back. I can do that administratively. And, um, I, and I'll move that we uh, receive and file seven A. All right. Second. Okay. All opposed. Passed. 7B, Resolution 2018-1, Resolution for the Adoption of the Wellhead Fee. The board's to review and sign the Resolution 2018-1, Adoption of the Wellhead Fee. So we read this into the minutes, I believe, at the last meeting, uh, and as I, if I recall, and uh, it is now our opportunity to vote and approve and uh, make this policy. Yes, sir. Pardon me, before you do, I think there was a clerical error. Okay, that was the first question I, I was going to ask. I thought CC had mentioned that. Where I'm do you find sure. that? Well, originally the board had directed that staff uh, set the fee at $265. Is that right? No, Peter? no. The, the official notice that was sent out for the October hearing, and I believe it was sent out in August, was for a total wellhead fee of $260 to be billed in four quarterly increments of $65. And then the clerical error was with the agenda packet that went out for the last board meeting indicated some different numbers. But the, the, the official notice that went out on the agency's letterhead and that was, has been on the website ever since August has the correct numbers, and those numbers are reflected in the resolution that's before you for adoption today. So, it's 240 and 60. That's why I wanted to bring it up because they don't reflect it. <laughs> so those need to be changed. At least a copy I have. I'm looking at 7B. It says 260 dollars increments of 65 dollars over four quarters. In the yeah, but if you look at now, therefore be it resolved. Oh, you are paragraph. correct, sir. The last so, the last paragraph. Yeah. Uh, so there needs to be a correction there. Well, look, that's just a typographical Yeah, error. that's what we're just bringing that, that up. So that the that isn't a problem for the adoption. It'll just be changed. All right. With the uh, acknowledgement of the, corrected, uh, the correction uh, on the, sec the last paragraph from 240 to $260 and the $60 to $65, is there any other comments or conversation about this resolution? You want to ask if there's anybody in the public that wants to address it? Uh, anybody. Own? Anybody want to have a question about this resolution? Anybody... We're all good here. Okay, all right. Rob. Uh, CC, uh, roll Going call once, for a vote, please. Yeah. So, okay. do we need a motion to accept? Take a motion. He'll move that we accept, and I second. All right. So uh, that is a, a first um, for Mr. Finch, a second for Mr. Baggerly. CC, take a roll call, please. Dan Green. Yes. Jim Finch. Yes. Russ Baggerly. Yes. Johnny Johnston. Yes. The resolution 2018-1 passes without opposition. Uh, with the corrections that we adopted, that we com commented to $260 and $65, or $65 in the last paragraph of the resolution. All right, what do we got next here? 7C, <coughs> which I believe is our discussion of Assembly Bill 1794. Uh, just quickly in review, the empty seat that we have down here, this is the assembly bill that will uh, be part of our new authorization and will allow us to uh, be a full board of five individuals and bring on some more folks. The most important thing here is I want to make sure that everybody has proof this. The most important changes are found in section 401-5 which run from lines 36 to 39, uh, maybe past 39 into page 4 and extend into line 7 of page 4. Uh, page 4 on top and that page 4 in the bottom right hand corner. Essentially these are the individual line items that the board had asked that person who we are looking to uh, uh, a point to that fifth member board seat, the things they can and cannot do, where they can and cannot live, and what their commitments must be to the agency, and what their commitments cannot be to other agencies. 
Any other thoughts? Have we reviewed these? Is everything there that we discussed? Peter, could you give a little um, update on what Jimmy sent us today? Uh, yes, we did review. Both Russ and I reviewed the draft. Uh, the first draft that Legislative Council provided us uh, omitted one of the qualifications, specifically uh, number eight. Um, I'm sorry, it's actually number nine. Uh, that would be line 21 to 25. That was omitted uh, from the original draft that we were provided, and we brought that to uh, Legislative Council's attention. They corrected it, sent us a revised draft, and that's what you have in front of you now today. Um, so this has been finalized. It's been um, docketed, so to speak. It's been assigned to committee, apparently the uh, Assembly Committee on Local Government. Um, it'll go through a committee process. Oh, there's going to be a hearing likely in April or May, and we are going to need to send somebody to attend that meeting, that hearing up in Sacramento to answer any questions that the legislature might have, the committee might have actually, uh, with regard to this. It could easily just remain on their consent agenda. That's our hope. Um, but if any one of the committee members wants to pull it off the consent agenda, they're entitled to do so, and they may have questions. And the uh, uh, representative from uh, Monique Lamone's office recommends that we're actually up there to be able to answer some questions. So we'll need to decide, you know, once we have a date, who would be the proper person to do that. Um, Besides that, it moves out of committee. It goes to the floor of the assembly. The assembly votes. Uh, if it passes the assembly, it goes to the uh, the Senate, and and then it goes through a similar committee process there. Hopefully, if uh, both the assembly and the Senate approve it, then uh, it goes to the governor's desk. The governor may have some questions. Anyway, we need to be on standby to address any questions that any of these folks have. Fortunately, it's pretty simple and I think straightforward. Nobody's anticipating any problems and it, it should go through fine. And currently there is no opposition. Uh, by the way, this is not uh, under subpoena. It's a voluntary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I couldn't resist that. Um, the, the one, there is one thing that, that uh, the assembly members' office has asked us to provide, in the, and that is on the board letterhead, uh, a statement that the board supports and sponsors the legislation. They need that to keep moving this through the process. Uh, are we looking at a month, two months, six months, a year? When, what when, when do you think this will be law so that we can actually exercise the authority? Um, let's say hopefully this fall. I mean, if we let's hope we're all alive. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Dan. Uh, Ojai Water Conservation District uh, uh, voted on this, and it's unanimous support of this from Water Conservation District. Okay, and this board's already approved all of this language, and we've already all voted and approved all of this language. So basically this is a view only, FYI only update, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, anybody have any comments about uh, what we're doing here? This has been submitted, this board's approved it. It appears that it's going to become law and we're gonna have the opportunity to uh, fill up that other seat and you know get some more voices in the room and some more uh, people to push the ball down the road. Can I, can I get a point of clarification? Sure, sir. Um, based on what, uh, Peter had indicated uh, the assembly is going to want to have some kind of document, I'm sure, that shows that you have voted for this and you're, you're supporting the bill and you're a, the sponsor. So I think we need to put something together related to that, unless it's already done, Peter. Well, no, nothing has, let me just be clear, the, the board did approve a letter requesting that uh, this legislation be put forward. That was in October. That was what the board has voted on. What they're asking for now is just simply a letter on OBGMA letterhead stating that the agency is the sponsor of, of this particular bill identified as AB, what, 
1794. That's I make what it a needs motion that the agency write a letter that su expresses a support for uh, Bill 1794. Second. Well, I'd like to add to that that we that we go ahead and since this is noticed as an action item, let's readopt the darn thing. We tell, tell we approve of the language of the legislation. That's my motion. Okay, we have a motion to approve the language as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Have a, any opposed and to we will, And we will draft a letter to send in. So the motion is we accept the language as approved and that the agency will draft a letter in support and put it on its letterhead and make it available to the legislature. Amen. Uh, we have a first by Mr. Baggerly, a second by Mr. Finch. Any opposed? All right, passed. So that's what we'll do. Shouldn't we vote on these things? We uh, never get well allowing the eyes. Uh, see only the nays. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Actually, yes. CC, call it roll call vote, no, it, please. It is true, Dan. Uh, the roll call Act, vote, the, please, CC. You're, you're absolutely right. The Brown Act has changed. Jim Finch? Yes. Dan Breen? Yes. Russ Baggerly? Yes. Johnny Johnston? Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Living in the land of negative last, for so long, you know, it's just like stay CC, right, yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the future, Dan should go last in case he has to break a, a tie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, good point, since there's only four of us and we, we, we might tie someday. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, uh, not to be so informal about this, but you know, as we, when we get through all this process, we're gonna make sure we're doing it all right. Anybody ever, any other comments about agenda item 7C, uh, Assembly Bill number 1794? Okay, next agenda item. Um, California Water Bond 2018. So it looks like we've got a Mateo Crow here to talk to us about um, agenda item 7D. So why don't we have you come up, talk to us about what we're looking at here, what you'd like the agency, what you, what you want from the agency, uh, and what we can get out of you. <laughs> All right. Um, do you guys have any handouts on this? I can we have an agenda uh, in, our item, in our agenda. We have your letter dated November 15th, 2017. We have a spreadsheet or a, a, a couple of columns with uh, sources and supplies and anchor feet. All right. And uh, we have a short summary of the major programs in water supply and water quality bond act of 2018, part of the agenda. Cool, sounds good. All right. um, thanks for having me here. Um, my name is Mateo Crow, and I'm working on the California water bond, which is a uh, water bond, essentially a follow on for prop one. Um, so for the audience and for everyone, Prop 1 was the 2014 water bond. Um, there's still projects being funded by it. Uh, this year, there's actually procurement for the surface storage projects. Uh, this is essentially the next water bond. Um, water bonds in California do pass about, I think on average, it's been about every 2.2, 2.3 years. But um, more recently, they've been farther apart and larger. Um, so this bond is the largest water bond in state history. Um, it is about a billion dollars larger than Prop 1 after adjusting for inflation. So it totals $8.877 billion, and uh, it funds a wide variety of stuff. Uh, the big categories are watershed restoration, um, fish and wildlife habitat, uh, infrastructure repair, um, kind of the traditional urban um, water district programs like urban water conservation, uh, stormwater, um, stormwater is 550 million, wastewater recycling, 300 million, um, safe drinking water, and wastewater treatment for disadvantaged communities is at 750 million. And then for this agency, uh, most importantly, there is 675 million for the implementation, implementation of Sigma. Um, so that can be groundwater recharge and storage projects, listening to what was on the agenda. Uh, earlier made me think of that. Um, so recharge storage, um, groundwater rights acquisitions, um, and then generally the implementation of um, GSPs um, and the strategies which are due in 2020. Um, and so beyond that funding, there's also, and I'm not as aware um, of the uh, of the management agencies um, kind of practices, but there's also 400 million for groundwater desalination, uh, which I know is quite large down in kind of coastal Ventura County. Um, so those are kind of the major funds. Um, also in Ventura County, as part of the watershed restoration funding, there is 10 million for um, projects along the Santa Clara River, and there's 80 million towards the removal of the Matillaha Dam. 
Um, so that money would go to the Coastal Conservancy um, for the Mantillaha Dam. And, um, you know, there's, I think, several coalitions down here working towards that. Um, that's what it would work towards. So what we're currently doing right now is we've, um, we are a citizens initiative. Um, so we were not passed through the legislature. Actually, uh, most water bonds aren't. Prop 1 was legislative. It started off independent and then became legislative. That could still happen with us, um, but, you know, who knows. Um, but Prop 84 and Prop 50, the two bonds previous to that, were both, uh, again, like this, citizens' initiatives. Um, and so what we're doing right now is gaining support for the bill. The bill will be on the November 2018 ballot. Um, and up kind of through June, we're essentially doing public outreach. Um, these are good opportunities for to make agencies aware of what funding would be available. Uh, so when November comes and hopefully the bill passes, uh, there will be, uh, you know, agencies will be aware what, what they can kind of access and also to build our endorsement list and gain support. And our, um, given the groundwater funding in this, we are um, actively reaching out to GSAs um, and water districts across the state. Um, today I met with Ventura County um, with the city of Ventura, city of Oxnard. Um, we're also working with Conservancy and Zohai Land Conservancy um, and trying to kind of build up support around that. Uh, Cayuguas, we've also had communications with the Upper Ventura River uh, GSA, Ventura River Water District, uh, Casitas. I've been speaking with Ron Merkling. Um, so I think he's going to bring that to the board uh, relatively soon. Um, and yeah, what we're trying to do is gain support with public agencies because... Um, it went yesterday. It went yesterday? Yeah. Oh, did it? Proved it. You proved it? No. There we go. Um, I'll email Ron and uh, check it out with him. Um, yeah, and so what this bill essentially is meant to do is to defray costs for local agencies such as yourself. So a lot of the bill is matching funding. Um, those requirements are waived in certain instances, um, certainly. Um, generally, uh, depending on how critically overdrafted a basin is in terms of the groundwater stuff and um, for disadvantaged communities. Um, but these uh, bond measures essentially allow local agencies to pursue projects they wouldn't otherwise have the strict funding to be able to do. Um, so like I said, we're gathering support from, uh, from around the county. Um, eventually we'll use that to hopefully gain the support of Limon, the other assembly members, um, all the way up to Congress. We've just kind of started our legislative uh, outreach in the last two weeks. Um, we've been working primarily with organizations uh, before then. Um, and so if all goes well, um, we're going to have a wide variety of organizations that have endorsed our bill, support it, um, have legislators as well, you know, all types of you know, civic groups, that sort of thing. Um, we've currently been endorsed by Aqua, which is the Association of California Water Agencies. They represent 430 agencies across the state. Um, we've been endorsed by the Chamber of California Chamber of Commerce, a number of conservancies, environmental groups. Uh, environmental Water Center on the environmental justice side. So there is pretty broad support for the bill. And so what I'm here today is to answer any questions that the board might have and um, ask for the uh, endorsement of the bill from the board. So I'd like to kind of open it to questions. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, well, the $675 million for groundwater sounds great, but it won't affect this agency because we've never been an overdraft. Um, does that mean we're ineligible? Yes. Apparently. N uh, no, it does not. Sta stabilizing groundwater levels in overdraft groundwater basins. That's the way it's written. Yeah. So there is certainly, um, I'm talking from DWR, overdrafted basins are going to be the priority. So if this basin isn't overdrafted, it's not going to be a priority. Um, I would have to check, again, the exact language on that. It doesn't that, mean I don't support the, yeah. the, the thing. What, what, I, what I do find unfortunate is that there wasn't more money for integrated regional water management planning uh, purposes and projects. Uh, yeah. It was it was p pretty pitiful. So, yeah, to kind of give provide background on that, so there this bill, the only IRWIM funding is $5 million for continued coordination and administrative costs. So it's essentially to keep IRWIM going, but there's no money towards actual projects. Um, our mentality behind that, it was considered... Um, and Irwin is kind of tricky to put on a citizens initiative. SB5, the people, actually, the people who created Irwin are very involved in SB5. And there's currently an effort to take SB5, um, which is the June Parks and Water Bond Bill, um, 
and there's 240 million of funding there that is very loose language, uh, which the legislature gets to do. And there's a current lobbying effort to make that designate that Irwin money. Um, but there was no Irwin money in that bill. There's none in ours because when we do this, we require um, a lot of kind of broad support and legitimacy from the public. And with Irwin, it is kind of a black box. And especially along the Central Coast, I'm from uh, Monterey County, and Irwin has been immensely popular there. Um, there's a lot of support for it, but it is also essentially allocating money to these regional bodies, and no one really knows where it's going. So with this funding, um, there are certainly Irwin is kind of, Irwin agencies, I guess, groups are planning. Um, I've actually talked to some that are planning to kind of apply as an Irwin group for funding. Um, so there isn't going to be, you know, specific Irwin funding available, but you can apply through your coordinated group um, for, you know, urban water conservation, stormwater, wastewater recycling, uh, kind of whatever um, is uh, of interest. There are a few. Yes. <laughs> so there's nothing stopping this agency from applying for grants under this bond, uh, even though they're outside of the groundwater specific 675 million. Just in looking at this, I see about six yeah. different avenues that would certainly fit our groundwater management plan, um, agricultural water conservation, data management, stormwater management, land management for water yield, fisheries restoration, and water and specific habitat improvements for fisheries. Yeah. The language um, is generally quite generally quite general. Um, it's pretty wide so that um, a lot of agencies do qualify. The only restrictions I believe there are, are on stormwater, but that's for, it just limits it to public agencies, um, which you guys are one of, you know, public agencies, essentially county or city or regional um, public agencies, but that would still kind of fall under your uh, auspices, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And what are you looking for us from tonight? Um, tonight, depending on, this, I guess goes back to your lawyer, um, consideration or I guess a resolution of endorsement of the bond. Um, so we can list essentially OHI uh, Groundwater Management Agency as a public endorser. So we can maintain an endorsement list. People on these bills, there's a lot of bandwagoning. Um, the bigger the list, the more people come in. It's kind of exponential. Um, and so add you to that public supporter list um, would be what an endorsement would be. There'd be no financial anything. Need a letter on le um, letterhead? Uh, Frankly, uh, an email with uh, saying that this agency That's from fine. the respectable That's person would be sufficient. I, we had yeah. set the agenda up such that if the board was so inclined, direct staff to support a, board, a uh, support letter Good. and then had the board president sign it. I I would uh, not be comfortable today until I do a little more research. I mean, you know, it, I grant you, it's it's great. It's it's just bond money, but the last bond money is still sitting out there heavily. From one, yeah. And if I could actually uh, so address that, so Prop One, the last bond money. Yeah. There's been a lot of feedback of there's a lot of money still out there. Why is there a lot of money? There actually isn't a ton left. What's left is 2.7 billion for surface water storage projects. Billion or a million? Billion. It's a lot of money. Um, there are 11 projects currently applying for it. So there was special language in Prop 1 that said these funds couldn't be allocated. They put essentially a locking period. And so they couldn't be allocated until this year. So they're actually going through the procurement right now. If you search water bond, you don't get our water bond. You get you know all these different dam and reservoir projects uh, applying for it. Um, but outside of that specific funding, uh, the vast majority of um, Prop 1 has been allocated. How much that money has been spent, you're right, is pretty minimal. Pretty minimal. But, um, but I think that's pretty, you know, uh, shows just how long it takes and why it's kind of important to uh, pass these bond bills because it, DWR is not the most efficient agency the world's ever known. Well, along and say that again. But does, it, does it sunset or anything if the money is not spent within a certain period of time, or does this just keep adding to the authority to issue uh, more and more bonds? So what bonds sometimes can do, this one does not, um, but Prop 1 did it, I believe, was it reallocated like 20, pretty small amount, I think 20 million or 25 million from Prop 84, and essentially pulled it into the bond, and they wrote that in the legal language. Uh, this doesn't because... It's expected that a lot of Prop 1's money is still yet to be spent, but uh, bond measures can do that. They can kind of snag leftover unspent money and 
But is there anything that says use it or lose it, where, you know, if they don't do it by a certain time, then that goes away and you come up with new legislation? No, I don't think they've ever kind of reached that uh, eventuality. They won't won't lose the opportunity to add to the the debt in California. Yeah. Um, (laughs) That's right. Sorry. Uh, Mateo. Yes. Who's going to administer this this bond, DWR or the state board? Um, A number of different groups. So different categories. You have the kind of the short summary. Um, On our, I'm sorry, I don't actually have a copy here. On our website, we have an Excel sheet, which has each funding category and it has the agency it goes to. So off the top of my head, DWR receives um, significant funding. I think Resource Control Board does as well. Coastal Conservancy, like Matillaha Dam funds, that's Coastal Conservancy. A little bit for Department of Conservation, um, part of the, I believe, the land management money. Wildlife Conservation Board, I think it's $400 million. Fish and Wildlife, most of the fish money um, is, I believe, going there. So it's a number of state agencies, um, and the only thing below the state agencies is... There's you know a few regional regional agencies that are technically part of the state, but they operate on a regional level. So it's a lot different than the propositions that we've w- had before. 50, 84, one. Um, let's see. It started out being um, DWR, then state board took over one. I, I don't remember which. It's hard to keep. Yeah, up with it, it, all it's of confusing. Them. Um, no, this one is alloc- There's. I mean, maybe a dozen agencies, I think, that receive funding. Um, and e- as, as I understand it, then each one of those agencies has different requirements for whether or not they charge a um, match. That is correct to a certain extent. So um, you're right. So the way we're doing, or not we, we don't actually get to do the allocation of grants. That's done by the agency, and for the most part, um, that agency uses their own uh, methods, I guess, standards for uh, um, giving out grant money. Um, we, there are some standards in our bill in that um, certain funds, um, not all of them, but there's matching fund requirements of 50% um, for a lot of the funds in the bill, which are typically waived or lessened for areas that significantly benefit disadvantaged communities. Um, so that's really the only restrictions we, we put on that. I don't think we'd we'd uh, qualify for that. I don't that. think I was actually looking at a map, and there's I think there's some, but not a large enough for grant purposes. Yeah, there's, there's only a two or three, three or four maybe in Ventura County, and it's not up here. Yeah, no, most are over to the south. Looks like we have at least one board member, including myself, that wants to take a look at this and get Absolutely. up to speed on this before we put a put our put our our name next to it so i'm going to push this to the next uh, meeting and then we'll go back and review it then if that's sounds perfect i just wanted to you know be here to answer questions no, i really appreciate it look i mean any time that, that, that there's money going to be available yeah. you know this is the type of agency that needs to look at it and 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 get better at figuring out how to get a hold of it right uh, yeah you know and that's you know russ is really you know russ i count on russ to talk about these kinds of issues because he's got a lot of history in that so i, I am confident that when when that perfect one comes in front of us he'll be jumping on the table saying we want that one <laughs> uh and you know that's kind of how that's from an edu- from an education standpoint you know that's yeah. where i'm relying a little bit of my resources to relying on him to give us that of answer course yeah that, so. and i'd like to invite the board if they have any questions um john has my email to right. please let me know Appreciate it. Thank you for your Appreciate time. Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Any other comments on uh, agenda sev- item 7D? That puts us to, excuse me here, get back to where we were, to item 7E, which is the groundwater management program. The board's going to review the draft plan and authorize opening a no- p- noticed public comment period. I believe that is you, Mr. Kerr. Thank you very much. Um, Now, as many of you know, we've been dealing with evacuations and impassable roads, which has really limited our our capacity to meet as an ad hoc committee to finalize the groundwater management plan to the point that it is is ready for the board to review. So unfortunately, we have to request another month for this. So we would need to table that portion of this discussion uh, to the February meeting. Um, I'm sorry. I drifted away there for a minute. <laughs> Try me again on that. Okay. We couldn't get together because continuation. 101 was closed. All right. Mandatory evacuations, mud at my house, all the good stuff. All right. Goes along with. That explains it all. Thank you. Living in a tectonically active watershed. <laughs> but 
<laughs> that being said, we're Another alive, to look up when standing, I get the house is okay. We're grateful. Um, but we do have to, would like to take this opportunity to really highlight some of the uh, select action items from the OBGMA 2018 Groundwater Management Plan update. And really as a way of background, it's the 2007 Groundwater Management Plan update that had in it provisions and abstracts of projects which became the uh, local groundwater assistance grant funded groundwater model of the basin, which became the Prop 50 funded San Antonio Creek Spreading Grounds Rehabilitation Project. We put these projects into the plan such that we can then take action, either with private or uh, the OBGMA funds or grant money to make things happen. And what I wanted to do tonight is kind of talk a bit about what we've done and how we're paying attention to these things in compliance with the groundwater management plan and then bring about a handful of relatively new ideas uh, some of which you know could fall into the under the purview of, of future bond monies down the road and talk about some of the partnerships that uh, that could find their way to uh, supporting these these programs so that being said I uh, wanted to talk about the basin conditions first and then talk about these groundwater management plan action items, namely the inside program. Stay tuned. The depth discrete monitoring well near a discharge site of the basin. We have a great one at the San Antonio Creek Spreading Grounds Rehabilitation Project. We need more. Recharge in town, contour farming conversions, and summer is for pools so without further ado to answer the question of where we're at today uh, and unfortunately largely because of highway closures and access issues we've uh, we actually have this hydrograph for the key well uh, from less this time last year to the 21st of december and what you'll notice on this is that we see the big uptick on the blue hydrograph. Uh, this is water levels measured every every 90 minutes. Uh, you can see where the pumping is of this particular well and and how it reached its peak uh, in June and then has come back down. It appears to have hit the nadir as I mentioned earlier tonight on the 13th of December. Uh, that well is right in the middle of the basin so we call it the key well. The red line is temperature which really seems to respond to some degree to recharge, but then on a more muted uh, frequency, the actual pumping of the water from this particular active well. Where does that put us on the long-term hydrograph? Um, on the 13th of December, at that nadir, we were at 190 feet, a slight downtick from the 164-foot high on June 5th. Um, but as you can see, we're still well ahead of where we were for much of the period prior to uh, 2016, 15, 14, 13. Jordan, did you say 190? Yes. Yes. Let me go back. Let's see. Yeah, 190 feet. That was at the low point in December. And it's come back up since then. We just haven't quantified that due to the access issues. That's the key well. That's the key well, yeah. Okay, so back to the some of the highlights of the forthcoming groundwater management plan. Uh, if you've been around me for a while, you know we kind of like finding cool acronyms. Funding agencies tend to like them too. Um, we like this one, it's called the INSIDE program. INSIDE is a semi-acronym for Invasive Species Identification and Eradication. I like it. The big ones, this, this fella, Arundo. These guys, Eucalyptus, and the Fan Palms. Now, as we've talked about a little bit before, uh, much of these were taken care of by St. Thomas. Um, it's, you know, as intense as it was, there are a lot of benefits to fire, especially in the, in the 
hydrosphere, so to speak, mostly dealing with the reduction in evapotranspiration. And it's important to do what we can <laughs> because we don't want to count on or rely on fire to do this work for us. So part of the inside program would be to identify where these are, work with other agencies that are actively targeting and removing these vegetations that are taking our water and put it, putting it back in the atmosphere. And as beautiful as palms and arundo and eucalyptus are, they're not native. They've got issues. They're taking up water that's, you know, thwarting out native species, both flora and fauna. The depth discrete monitoring well uh, that's up near the spreading grounds monitors five different zones. Um, and we've noticed over monitoring of the discharge of San Antonio Creek from this basin and comparing that to water levels over periods of time and how that's changed in response to precipitation, recharge, and discharge, that there is the disconnect between the deep pumping water aquifers in this basin and those which tend to feed San Antonio Creek. So what we'd like to do is add the depth discrete monitoring well near the lower portion of the basin, near the discharge side, to demonstrate that the water levels are indeed bifurcated and that they are responding differently and have completely different looking hydrographs on the short term. And this is something that we outline in the groundwater management plan using the, the SASGRIP DDMW as a model. We're thinking that this could be added near the lower portion of the basin, such as the Hanson Yard. They'd be happy to drill a well on their own property for it. Uh, it's in a pretty decent spot. There are also many city facilities that have, uh, have an overlying footprint to good target areas for a depth discrete monitoring well. And that's one way that city, OBGMA, and other agencies can work together on projects like this. The idea is that it's intended to detail the stratified aquifer responses to precipitation, pumping, and discharge. Recharge in town. Now, there's quite a few areas where, uh, where this is done really all over the world, and, the, and many of them start with pretty pictures like what you see on the bottom. But the idea is that if we, if, if the concept of, of the bifurcated stratified aquifers, one feeding the people, one feeding the fish, establishes over time, we can find a way to provide and direct some recharge to those shallow aquifers that feed the fish. Most of these are within the city on the south and west side of the Ojai Basin. So what this does, and again, partnering with the city and other agencies, Recharge in Town would provide shallow walk for recharge, really with a target for stream flow exfiltration, that is f keeping water in San Antonio Creek when it's not gonna be there under current conditions because the runoff is more, is more rapid and, and as we're seeing these days, uh, very flashy. It maximizes urban action. You can maximize public awareness in this. People will see a project in town and know, hey, something's going on here. We're putting water back into the basin, not so much for the farmers on the east end or even the city use, municipal use or industrial use. This is almost exclusive an environmental project. It can be multi-purpose. You know, you can have an amphitheater that is a spreading grounds when it's wet, but it's a place to play music when it's, when it's, uh, when it's dry. Maybe even a skate park. A skate park here could be incorporated into that. There's also a flood control component to such projects. And of course, city property and partnerships are, are critical. Um, other cities, Santa Barbara inclusive, has turned streets, parks, parking areas, uh, incorporated into these kind of infiltration galleries. And we know we have some projects in the city like this and, and higher up in the watershed. Contour farming conversions, something that is in the groundwater management plan. You'll read all about it, but here's a comparison in one area where this went to work, where you conduct contour farming, you have the capacity to, and it's not done very frequently with citrus and avocado because it tends to be uh, my understanding, and Jim, you can fill us in more on this. It's fraught with different challenges than say tea or row crops, but there are examples of this where on the right-hand side of this graphic, you have sort of a traditional north-south uh, grid of, of planting, and on the left, you have 
the, the rows of trees planted along contour. The idea being that when rain comes, it slows down and spreads and sinks. Sound familiar? Slow it, spread it, sink it. We've heard that quite a bit. Uh, when you have the contour farming practices in place, those rills can actually act as little dams and force recharge downward. Whereas if they're straight down north-south and you've got a steep south-facing slope, you get rivulets in, the, in between the rows of trees and that water runs off much more quickly. You can just count the number of components for recharge, stormwater, et cetera, that, uh, that are benefits from this kind of practice. Summer is for pools. <clears throat> Something that is, is going on, obviously, everywhere in the Ventura River watershed is very close, uh, a very close eye on steelhead habitat. Uh, the major link being discharged from this groundwater basin vis-a-vis, -vis, as we discussed just now, mostly from shallow aquifers to San Antonio Creek. The idea being that once that water leaves the basin, it's in the creek and it's going to go up and down in areas that are uh, relatively thin or thick packages of alluvium. Some of it's subsurface, some of it will flow on the surface, and there will occasionally be pools. Uh, October of this year, I took this photograph of a really cool pool. You can see how the bedrock, this is just past the discharge point of this basin, um, the bedrock tilting there on the left. It's a fairly decent pool. You've got, I observed fish swimming in this one at that time, but there wasn't a lot of flow elsewhere in the creek all the way downstream. So the idea in this, in the previous photograph, was that's an artificially uh, created pool with relatively abundant natural uh, debris damming the flow there, creating a pool that steelhead are used in their rearing. And this is something that is available because the groundwater is present, flowing in at a relatively low rate. You can create somewhat artificial pools for that habitat to uh, to sustain some of those species. So these are the kind of thoughts that we're, we're putting into, into the plan and some of them may become projects someday. It'd be great to see that, uh, but it provides an outline for input from this agency and others to identify projects they support and then go pursue funding when available from grants and other, other sources. And really that's what a groundwater management plan should be all about, a plan for action so that things can get done. Thank you. When are we, uh, so we, when are we gonna see the draft? Next month. So yeah, we're looking at next month. Roads are open, okay. and our ad hoc committee can get together. Um, okay. I think you've seen, a, we've discussed it we've some We've discussed degree. it, yes, so I just um, wanna. Yeah. So we'll update that and next month. All right, and then what's the process then? We, we, we look at a draft and then what happens after that? We notice it for public review and comment uh, with a specific time period for to receive the comments. And when we receive the comments, we respond to them, and then we finalize our, our plan at another meeting. All right, so sometime in the next two to three meetings, this is going to be a wrapped up process. Is that yes. what we're kind of looking at here? All right, just trying to get some idea. I got a lot of people that walk, a lot of folks ask, uh, and you know, at the end of the day, they just want an answer, and, they're, and if we have an answer, they're comfortable with the answer. When we say we don't know, that's always a problem, but you know, if long as we can tell them what we're doing, uh, that that helps out a lot. Um, any comments about the presentation that was made? Any uh, where we're at right now? I got one way back in the back there. Go ahead, uh, Bill Warwick, um, one of the members of the council. Um, actually, I'm the alternate on this tour too. But a uh, couple comments first on inside. I think that um, uh, we need to kind of uh, get more aggressive on some of the um, regulatory ambiguities that have blocked previous efforts for the removal of invasive species. One, I think, primary example, which the Watershed Council is very aware of, is when they get grants for eradication, uh, individual property owners can opt out, can have veto power, can basically say, yes, I have an invasive species on the stream bed that is part of my property, and it's doing a lot of harm to the environment, but I don't care. I can keep you from, do from removing the the invasive species. And of course, the nature of a rundo is that if you don't, 
uh, remove it upstream, you're basically imposing an external cost on everybody downstream, even if they want to act responsibly. So I think there really needs to be some thought to how to handle that particular regulatory aspect, maybe by having the fire department declare it a combustible vegetation, and you basically go to a landowner when the grants are available, say for eradication, say, it's going to be your responsibility if you don't let us do it, something along those lines. Uh, the other thing is that I think that given the cost relationship, especially on public land and rights of ways between pruning and maintenance of, of say, blue gum eucalyptus versus the cost of just removal, maybe there ought to be some policy guidelines where when it comes time for pruning, for safety, utility, rights of way, and everything like that, you say, well, you know, no, we're not going to prune it, we're going to remove it. Not a lot of difference in cost. And I think there's ways that we can think differently about in, in terms of implementing the inside program uh, with those kinds of points. And then the other aspect, I think, on the uh, recharge in town is I've always wondered about the feasibility of integrating um, uh, the city's uh, hardscape and, and potential for capture and recharge with the Ventura County Flood Control District. To what extent can you, for example, soft bottom the channelized broncos and stream beds um, that without compromising their ability to convey floodwaters uh, to integrate into those type of strategies. So I, I, wouldn't, I, I think we need to think differently about some of our flood control channels as well with that respect. So just some comments. Look forward to working with the city on that. Any other comments uh, about the presentation? About the pools, um, I just don't want us to start thinking about the reintroduction of beavers. <laughs> really? I thought that was well, a good idea. Well, a couple Tell of fifteen-year-olds, well, a couple of ten-year-olds loose in a river one afternoon, you get a damn bigger any beaver will build. So, <laughs> yeah, we can figure that out. In our plan. Yeah. Uh, put that in our plan, right? Uh, okay. Seven uh, E would be our groundwater management plan discussion. We're going to move on to our next agenda item. Thank you, Jordan, for that. Look forward to seeing the final version, getting this plan. I know you've been working on it really hard. Uh, get this approved, get it in front of us, get funding, get it implemented, and, you know, get at it. So that's, that's, that's exciting. Uh, a 7F, discussion of hiring a general manager for OBGMA. Before we get into that, i got a couple of thoughts on this. Um, as an agency, uh, we all have other responsibilities. Uh, I, 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 I'm a volunteer. Uh, I run a small water company, and I run a... A, a, another company that pays my bills. Uh, we all have jobs here that are, we find ourselves chasing other things. One of the things that I find is that we have plenty of great ideas. Uh, we have plenty of legislative ability to do what we want, uh, but sometimes uh, the implementation of that, the follow through of that, uh, doesn't always get to where we want to be. Um, and it's not, it's not our fault, it's just because we, we're busy. You know, and we're all busy. We run in a city. We're running a water company. We're running orange. We're running orchards, and in, in, in our free time, we're trying to figure out how to deal with water. Uh, and so, I think it's appropriate for us to start having discussions to see if we can staff ourselves at appropriate level, so that when uh, we have a water management plan, that we can have discussions as a board and and know that without me having to take a, a Wednesday in the middle of the day. To, which I have no problem doing, but you know, to the extent that I don't have to, I would prefer somebody else, a, a staff, some of the staff, if we could get staff to do some of these follow-up <coughs> items. Um, we're, we're, you know, without rain, we're going to have a lot going on, and let's just assume that we're going to have a lot going on. So I wanted to make sure that we're appropriately staffed to find the funding, implement the plan, uh, and then you know, be good stewards when we have a larger crowds and we have people asking us questions that you know, we're able to demonstrate that we are actively doing things as opposed to actively meeting and talking about doing things. Uh, so that's just where I'm coming from on that. I, this, this, uh, this was not my idea, but I'm not gonna, I don't have any issue. I'm, I'm glad it's on the agenda. I don't know where it came from and whose idea it was, but I appreciate that it got here. Um, so that's kind of where I was thinking my thoughts on that. I just wanted to get that out there so when we were going forward, anybody, before we get into the drill down on this, anybody have any overall high, concept ideas about what I just talked about if that if what I'm saying makes sense if that's crazy we can do it with what we got what do you think we've been talking about this for a long time um, CC does a great job for us but she now has two jobs 
um, for groundwater management agencies. Um, and this agency needs some um, direction and overview and some relief for CC because she's busy. She's always done a great job, but this is this is not a reflection on CC at all. It's just that our responsibilities and what we have to do now and in the future is getting much more complicated. And I'm tired of writing the ordinances for this agency. I want to say, John, make it so, or somebody else. Uh, so, like you said, we're we're all busy, and uh, while we bring some some expertise and some uh, institutional knowledge to to this board, we need um, some direction and some organization and some contemplation and some execution. So I put it on the agenda. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And John and I were going to try to get together and come up with a, um, a game plan for what this might look like, but with the fire and the uh, everything else, um, we didn't get, I didn't get to do that. So um, I'd like to suggest we put together a um, ad hoc committee of Dan. And John, would you be willing to help draft a, um, um, put together a concept for a part-time general manager with Dan? Do you have time? Actually, not. <laughs> I, uh... How do you feel about a part-time general manager? Um, you know, it, it's, uh, I fully get what you're saying. I sit on other places, other boards where it's voluntary and you trying to get the things done gets difficult. Mm -hmm. um, the difficult thing is, you know, as a person who writes big checks to this organization, the, the financial side of it is, is the consideration. And, but given what we've got with the, uh, with the groundwater plan coming up, I get it. I think it's worth pursuing. It might be some, you know, maybe we get to a point where you get back to an autopilot on on a sustainable plan, and, right. and it doesn't. But at a part time, you know, at a part time thing, yeah, let's let's explore. Well, I'd be willing to work with Dan uh, to come up with a um, a concept, a work plan, um, and some ideas about what it might cost us. Yeah, job description costs yeah, and bring right. it back to the board and have a discussion about it, see what we want to do with it. Is that okay? I have no issues with that. I think our next six months are going to be super busy here. Uh, Cause he just has difficult decisions to make. We're going to have a, we're going to have a water, we're going to have a plan from the agency to deal with. So we're going to have a lot of moving parts. And I think a lot can get accomplished with our plan and, and with somebody that we can, you know, say, this is what we want done, you know, yeah. and, and get these things done and get get the, get us moving down the road so that we're an active board actively looking at. You and know, frankly, you know, I am looking at changing his, his title from consultant to part-time general manager. Uh, we, you and I can write that up and we'll have a discussion. We'll bring it back to the board yeah. and have a discussion about that. John, do you have any thoughts on Well, I, I just want to share and just so the board knows, you know, I'm not looking, you know, I, I didn't ask for this, but certainly if the board decides that I'm the person you'd like to Oh, John, in I this, recruited you. I know Come you on, did, don't but, back but I didn't ask for it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I, and I'm real sensitive to the issues of your finances. Um, and so, and you know, there's a lot of work I do that you get at no additional cost. I'm sure Jordan does some of that, mm -hmm. and Peter and others. But um, yeah, I certainly could work with with the board members and give you some ideas. And even if you don't point your finger toward me, I can certainly give you some assistance on general manager job descriptions and work plans and those kind of things. All right. Well, so it's your prerogative to set up the, uh, the ad hoc committee. We'll reach out and we'll make that happen then. So let's, uh, a motion to have an ad hoc committee to review the issue of have, having a part-time general, we call him part-time general manager, or what, what was the word you just used there? Part-time general, part general, general manager. Part-time general manager, write up a proposal for a job description, a budget for it, bring it back to the board for an open discussion and decision by the board whether or not we want to adopt a part-time water manager. Great, thank you. All right.
Um, and, uh, and following up, that's super important. If, if, if we can't get some help, uh, and it, uh, then we need to make other decisions about what we are, what we're not, what we are, and aren't going to be able to accomplish. So I'm glad that we're having that. We can we can see that we need that help. Any thoughts on that? Any other volunteers that want to join in there and uh, work for free? All right. Well, we'll figure <laughs> out how we can bring somebody in here and pay them a check then. Uh, do we have any? Uh, that that ends our normal uh, action items that are on the agenda. Uh, item eight would be committee reports. I don't think we have any committee reports that I'm aware of. No. None that I'm aware of. Other than I'm going to make a effort to make a presentation to the uh, city council. I'll be available. We can talk about whatever. I mean, whatever we want. I'll I'll bring the dog and pony show and we'll tell you what we're doing. Uh, I also probably at some point should um, make some time to sit down with Russ and at the Casitas board level just for my own personal education curve and, and see what's going on down there and so I can catch up to a couple of individual items that I feel like I'm not up to speed on where I need to be right now. Sure. Um, and so those are important to me. Uh, look, we all understand that we, this agency is in charge of, of figuring out what we do when we have water, what we do when we don't have water, and what we do in between those two decisions. Uh, right now, our biggest decision, our biggest forward-looking thought is, are we going to get rain or not? Uh, and, and at the end of the day, uh, this agency, in many ways, is going to be reacting to what Casitas does in some respects. Uh, because you know you guys have you, you're, you're going to make that decision in April as to you know where your lake is in relation to where, where what stage drought we are in, and at that point, this conjunctive use concept of how groundwater is used is going to be terribly important. Uh, and I and I and I the, if we have something that we are going to be focusing on at this level at, at this agency, it is there. What happens when Casitas is at X percent? And it is clear that we are going to have to have a larger use of the groundwater in a conjunctive use way. Exactly what that means, what that looks like, who gets water, who doesn't, well, we all get water. This is a function of how much water you get, who is in stage four, and who's not in stage four at that point. Um, so those are issues that I'm going to start pushing for answers for. I think that we're going to get a lot of those answers from our water, from the plan that we're, we're looking at from Jordan. Uh, so I think that I'll have some of those answers there. And I know those answers are out there, uh, but we just need to get them in front of us. And, and then when the best case comes along, we can pat ourselves on the back and say we were prepared. So let's be prepared for the worst. And when the worst does not happen, let's pat ourselves on the back and, and know that we, that we were prepared for something that hopefully will not happen. Yes, sir. Well, let me just say a little bit about something you just said, and that was the conjunctive use uh, concept. Um, traditionally, Golden State bought about 30 percent of their water from Casitas, uh, and we're beginning to understand that the reason they did that was because they weren't taking care of their own system. Now that Casitas is you in just charge, just figure that out. <laughs> well, no, we're saying it out loud now. Okay. <laughs> and. Um, so now that we're fixing up the system, we're, we're, we are in the middle of having an assessment um, provided to us for the entire system and what we need to prioritize to get it fixed. And one of the things that we're seriously looking at is um, optimization of those wells in, in, their, in our field now and how we can better utilize that um, in the basin without having to buy more water and pump it through seven zones to um, everybody that could get groundwater instead. All right, so where are you guys in this process? I mean, from a conjunctive use standpoint, that is your backup source. And you've had, you know, where are you in the process of developing those wells so that you know, they're ready? Well, if we could get the Forest Service to give us a permit to put in the um, uh, data loggers for our horizontal bore, we, we would be a lot further along. But they seem to be stonewalling us. 
I'm talking about the wells on Grant. Isn't that what we're talking about? The development of the wells you currently have, not in looking that, for future water. That's right. Water. But but the other the other half of it is is the horizontal bore and maybe a a a, a well in the cold water formation um, close to the area along the canal where the siphon goes uh, underground. So there are things in in the planning stage. Um, we're moving along. When we get the the uh, assessment of the entire system, and we know more what we have to do to optimize the wells, we will do that. Great. Anything else? Does optimizing the wells mean you're going to suck them out of the base? And utilize it right here, yes. <laughs> so Jordan's chart is going to be a little different. It might. X amount. It might. Well, it, it, it you know, math tells you yes. I mean, if that's and that's the purpose of the conjunctive use concept. I mean, if there's not any, if, if we're not using lake water, we're using groundwater, and if we're going to use groundwater, it's going to go down. So that's the conversation we're having is to figure out, you know, how, are those wells going to be ready for you to supplement that need because there clearly aren't now, uh, and you know, or you don't. I don't. I don't get the impression you feel that they're ready to no. produce the amount of water no, you no, need. No, 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 so De definitely not. It seems they're, like there should be. They're not in real good shape. You know, Even the new one there. a big red fire on top of that at the Casitas level where that should be a top priority. You know they're bad. Any well guy could tell you that. Any well guy could fix it for you. Right. Working on it. All right. All right. But just as the gentleman in the audience <laughs> points out, that if the wells start working very efficiently, more water is drawn from the groundwater basin, correct? That is a correct statement. And ultimately, it becomes a function of use and where, where we're at and which stage drought we're at. Well, it, so, it also well. depends on, on where you're going to be drawing the water from. Uh, if we actually figure out that we want to go even deeper into the saline water and put in a small treatment plant, then we're going to be drawing down water, more fresh water can get in there and be utilized. So there are options. Mm -hmm. But the concern shouldn't be that they're going to use those wells. They're, that's what they own the wells for. So the concerns not shouldn't be placed on where they're going to use, that they are going to use those wells. The issue is you know, how are those wells going to be used in a process of distributing the water to the valley? And that's ultimately what the issue is. And that's called the conjunctive use agreement, which we will be working on. Right, but it does change, you know. Changes the, everything. Certain, the, the base year or the, the trends, and therefore the idea of safe yield or whatever, if suddenly uh, the dependence on the basin here is being pumped to serve here, which it hasn't in the past. We've been using the backup of the lake for some time, and we need to balance that, right? Is that that's, part of the that's idea? That's what needs to be hammered right. out as an agreement. But yeah. it doesn't Contractive change use. safe yield. No. It just changes what's coming out. Right. And safe the agreement would the protect safe the safe yield. And if, if I may, if, you know, the optimization, I, as I understand it, is a holistic targets the decentralization of the pumping not into one big deep cone of depression but into areas that yeah. will have less effect on water levels elsewhere and minimize the amount of energy required to lift that water. And as Russ mentioned, uh, if it is determined to be feasible to target that deeper, more brackish water at the very deepest portion of the ORA basin, extracting that rather than the fresh water on top and treating it uh, really could be a boom for the basin as a whole because they're removing out the salts. It's effectively a desulfur project where they take out the salty water at the bottom and allows fresh water to recharge that in a way that really optimizes the basin as a whole. So I think, I think this agency should be keeping an eye on this. I look forward to seeing that optimization uh, report and implementation. Well, you'll probably be write it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Again, we have a lot of, uh, I'm glad this agency is here. I'm glad we have the folks that we have on here. I'm glad that and we can sit in a room and have these discussions uh, and looking for solutions that we know we need to look for. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that we are much more active now uh, in talking about these decisions. I know you always have been, but uh, now we got to do something about it. Uh, and I want to get back to those days where we can just have these half-hour meetings and, and move on. Uh, but we're not in that. We're not. We're not. We're not doing that right now. So here we are. Uh, any other? Anybody else have any other questions? Any other comments? Any other things that I didn't cover? 
All right. Uh, our next meeting is going to be held on February 22nd, 2018, uh, 5 o'clock here. Uh, with that information, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you for attending. No, Russ and I can bang out a, a description. I appreciate your. Oh. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. What? Okay, I'll apologize for that part. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, on the idea.